Hi everyone, I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV and today I'm brought to you by a special guest, Marco Messina from Italian Football TV. Marco, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, Nini. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've been meaning to do this for a while. Obviously, you guys definitely make sure you check out Italian Football TV, the best YouTube channel in regards to Italian football, Serie A, everything's professional, great discussions. Honestly, it's the best channel to go to to learn everything Serie A related because Serie A is on the up now. So, and that's the best channel to cover all of that. But anyway, today's video is going to be a match preview for our game against Roma that's happening tomorrow night. Now, of course, the first leg, 3-3. Honestly, I thought Roma deserved the win. I felt that they did outplay us. Were you surprised by Roma's performance or were you expecting them to be so dominant? Completely surprised. Anyone who knows Roma or who watches this idea was definitely surprised. Even Roma fans were surprised at this one. Just because Roma has never been a team to really do some fighting in the Champions League, especially when they're down, they uh, never have that mentality to keep going. New coach, um, never played, in, never coached in the Champions League before, and with a lot of injuries. So I was extremely surprised. I was expecting. Uh, I, I, I said, listen, if they get a tie, it was almost like a win. So the fact that they were really pushing for a win uh, was was pretty incredible. So I was definitely surprised by that. Oh, really? Because, I, I mean, honestly, I was surprised too. I felt that we would beat Roma. I've always felt Roma are a team better on the ball than they are off the ball. But I kind of feel it was the tactics on that day that really played into their hands. Obviously, giving Perez and Kodor of all the space and time to get forwards whenever they wanted. They kept stretching us. And Kodor, to me, he kind of sums up Roma. You know, fantastic on the ball, great technique. He can pick a pass, shot, whatever. But off the ball, obviously, lack of pace. Uh, positional aware awareness sometimes and uh, I think he reflects but I, I heard he's been in great form recently for Roma Kolarov. Extreme form he's definitely been maybe one of the best signings actually of the summer for all of Serie A just because of yeah. how cheap they got him and then the performance that he's doing and all of his goals have been like crucial crucial goals for Roma he's been fantastic actually in the left back. Yeah exactly another guy that really impressed me in the first leg was Edin Dzeko and I've always felt he was a he's been a very underrated type of player and for some reason I don't get this thing where if you do leave a big club it means that you're not as good I've always felt this guy is a class player his performance against us is one of the best like individual performances I've seen from an opposition team hold up play link up play he's just like the complete striker really I, I again another one who yeah he's definitely under he, I mean he was Serie's top goal scorer and he's still not rated by many but the way that he pulled off that volley I'm sorry Chelsea fans it was just it was a thing of beauty. Like you have to appreciate sometimes, even when the opposition scores some kind of goal like that, you appreciate how hard it is to really score that. And Jekyll definitely stepped up when he was needed. Was needed. Yeah, exactly. But how's Roma's form been recently since that, that first game? This is actually a really good time for Roma. Again, like I'm telling you, they're missing some really key players, especially in their defense with Manolas, the Greek defender. I have to mention him because my partner, Mike, if you know us, he's Greek. Yeah. And if I didn't mention him, he would have been really mad at me. But anyway, Roma, they have the best defense in Serie A at the moment, only conceding five goals in their first 10 games, which is extremely surprising because Roma constantly changed their defense. Wasn't expecting this much, um, you know, consistency in the back, at least for them. They are, I think, seven games unbeaten and they've won four games this season as 1-0 wins and Roma again they're that type of team who when they go under a little bit of pressure they're not able to come out with um, a point or with a result and this season we're starting to see them that even when they're not playing great they're able to pull through with wins at least in the Serie A as the Serie A is concerned and in the in the Champions League I think you could argue that they've been the best Italian team uh, draw with Atletico draw yeah. with um, with Chelsea and as a Serie A fan uh, you know a fanatic we didn't expect that we thought this was going to be extremely tough we we're expecting you know a loss praying for a tie and they, they come through with ties and now they get to play uh chelsea at home but i still think that chelsea hold the upper hand, upper hand. yeah i mean I, I i hope so i feel like um 
we, we can't let Roma play to their strengths, basically. And their strengths are their ability on the ball. I was I, I liked how Perotti was cutting inside and obviously freeing, freeing up the space for Kolarov to get down. And, um, of course, the interchange in their passing, too. Another guy that impressed me was that Gabriel Jesus guy, that Brazilian, you know, comfortable playing out from the back. And I was going to say, do you feel that Roma are missing Antonio Rudiger? Yeah, Juan Jesus. And he's been, he's been another one of those guys in defense. Um, I think that... I, I loved Rudiger. Rudiger is a, a great a great player in my opinion. I know I came on your channel even in the summer when he was going to Chelsea. Yeah. And I think that it's hard to say that they miss him. Do I think that they'll miss him in the wrong run? In the long run, yes. But at the moment, with the results and the way that everything is going, probably not. They're hit with injuries. They got Karsdorf, who just came back from injury. Yeah. Same day he tore his ACL for the second Same time. time. Uh, they've yeah. got they've got an extreme bad problem with injuries, like I said, and I think that they miss Manolas more than they do miss Rudiger. But uh, yeah, Rudiger, I, it's definitely a player that any team would miss. Would miss. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. But um, yeah, I'm just thinking predictions for the game. Obviously, we're playing Roma away. What kind of atmosphere, what type of game do you feel we're gonna get? Do you think Roma will continue to play the same way, or will they adapt a bit, or? What do you think is going to happen? Listen, again, I want to be completely honest with you. I never expected a 3-3 draw in England, nonetheless. So I think that uh, this Rome was unpredictable. They're a lot stronger than even I give them credit for. And I think it's it's this turning point where we're seeing maybe Roma can really do good under this new coach who's never done in the Champions League at home with their fans behind them who are extremely passionate and we're going to try to fill up that Stadio Olimpico. I think that I, I'm still the type that thinks that Chelsea holds the upper hand and I wouldn't be completely surprised if Chelsea would come away with the win. But I'll go with uh, with another draw. Another draw. Another draw. Oh, obviously, I, I don't think we can take that. I think if it did become a draw, then the group's going to go right to the end, especially with that letter code drawing, unsurprisingly, against Carabat as well. But um, I'm just hoping that, obviously, we perform well. I think, you know, Roma, as I said, they struggled off the ball quite a lot. And like, I, I have this sneaking suspicion that Conte did switch the system in the second half. And when he switched to a 3-4-3, that did allow us to stop Roma's fullbacks getting forward because when we played 3-5-2, which I didn't really think was the best way to go about it, because I've always felt 3-5-2 is like a counter-attacking system. You're basically giving the flanks to the opposition because obviously you get double team, especially if you've got like a Perotti cutting inside, then you've got Kolarov overlapping and then same thing, Gerson, who I didn't think did anything, but then you've got Perez bombing forward as well. Actually, I was, I was surprised to even see Gerson play. I hardly never plays for Roma. Yeah. That, that yeah, was a weird right. one. Yeah, but um, but, but I have the sneaking suspicion that we, Conte will use 3-4-3. And I think with Morata up front, he'll be dropping deeper because there is space to play in front of that back three. And that should potentially give space for Pedro and Hazard to make runs in behind and hopefully get through on goal. Because, you know, they couldn't really cope with the movement off the ball from you know Morata and Hazard in that first half. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you guys know us, uh, the thing that we've been saying since the beginning is that we hope that Chelsea and Roma do go through. While we do want Roma to go on top, I got to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, of course, we're, we're huge Conte fans, huge Chelsea fans. They're the team that we really do support in uh, in England. And I think it's going to be uh, another good game. The first one was extremely entertaining. Um, I was watching like two games at once and the Roma game just completely had my attention because there was just so much going on so i think it's gonna be a good match be a good match yeah exactly and you know i do the same thing too sometimes i just watch two games at the same time it's, it's not really that hard to like watch two like i've always felt people always like misunderstand that but it's, it's, it's manageable people you can do it so in regards to Ro roma's danger men for the game tomorrow are there any players we should be aware of i, I did see el Trari's wonder goal he scored over the weekend are there any players i've been picking up form recently yeah, I mean, if you saw Shadawi's goal, it was a really beautiful one. I mean, the obvious, definitely Edin Dzeko, a uh, huge key player. I think one guy who's not having the greatest of starts to the season for Roma, who once he does get his goal, he's really going to make a huge difference, and that's Raja Nainggolan, one of my favorite uh, midfielders in the world, for sure. One, of, I think he's completely underrated. I think that he could be a key man, because if he starts to get his goal, it's going to be real trouble for Chelsea and real good for Roma. We're still missing a lot of key players. I think Dzeko's, um very important. Perotti, 
scoring. I mean, he always scores from the spot. He's out of, okay, this is funny. In the Serie A, he's got nine goals, and eight of them yeah. come from the spot since playing for Roma. So that's pretty crazy. So, yeah, he's definitely dangerous um, from the spot. El Shadawi, like you said, and uh, I think Roma as a unit. I think their coach, Di Francesco, he's a lot better than people give them credit for. And as a unit, they're pretty strong. Yeah. Because uh, that, that was one thing. One, Roma using nine going in differently last season. It, it was like he was part of a front three. Now it's like he's playing yeah. more of a midfield role this year. Because obviously that's how he got a lot of his goals last year, playing further up. And do you feel that, you know, with nine going in, playing a deeper role now, do you think that's affecting him in a way? Do you think that it's not he's not being used in the best way, playing a bit deeper? I think that Nainggolan's a player who knows what to do, and I think every player goes through some of these, you know, up and downs a little bit throughout the season, learning a new coach, learning a new system. It doesn't have to be all about Nainggolan at the end of the day, and I think that he'll take that um, ahead of his team winning because his team is winning, and I think it's just an added factor. I wouldn't be concerned about Nainggolan and, and dipping form. I think that uh, he's a fantastic player. I would call him a winner, and I think. Um, Players like him know how to find their form. But anyway, you guys, that's going to bring an end to today's match preview for the game against Roma. Obviously, don't miss out on it. 7.45 tomorrow. Thank you, Marco from Italian Football TV for coming on today. Do you have any closing words? No, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to a great game. I hope Chelsea start to pick up the pace in England. I'm keeping an eye a little bit more on the Premier League as I continue. And um, yeah, I'm looking for a good game. Good luck to the Chelsea fans. But I am hoping for a Roma win. Sweet. Thanks, you guys. All Thank right. you for watching. Of course, Italian Football TV, a link to their channel will be in the description below. Definitely subscribe and check them out. Obviously, if you're new to, subscribe to Blue Lines TV, home for all Chelsea enthusiasts, bringing you everything related to our club. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching. I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lines TV, signing out.